In this video, I will show you how to write an entire lowercase calligraphy alphabet using a brush pen. This method won't just teach you how to write the letters, but it will also help you improve your consistency, rhythm and the overall look of your calligraphy. It will help you lay down the foundation you need to further learn and improve your skills. Hey everyone, my name is Max and if you're new here, I make videos about calligraphy and hand lettering. If you like this type of videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with future and upcoming videos. Without any further delays, let's get to it. In this video, I'll be creating a modern alternation of the copper plate script using a brush pen. This is also known as brush calligraphy. This style is super basic and its scope is to introduce you to calligraphy letters. With time and practice, you can develop your own style and variations from it. To create this alphabet, I'll be working with these basic calligraphy tools. For paper, I have the cancer marker paper, which is great for brush pens. For a brush pen, I'm using a Tombow Furu no Suki with a hard tip, but feel free to use any other brush pen you have. Then I have the rolling ruler and the mechanical pencil. I use the rolling ruler and the pencil to create my guidelines, which are an absolute essential part for calligraphy. I have a whole separate video on what guidelines are and how to make them. If you're interested in learning more about these basic calligraphy tools, I also have a complete beginner's guide on my website. Links to all these tools and resources will be waiting for you in the description box below. If you look at the lowercase, also known as minuscule letters of the alphabet, you will notice that many of them are similar to each other. The best way to learn how to write these letters is by dividing them into individual strokes. These strokes are also called basic calligraphy strokes. If you've been practicing calligraphy for a while, you probably heard of these basic strokes. But if not, let me explain it. Think of these basic strokes as the building blocks for our calligraphy letters. It's a set of 8 strokes that individually look like just some random lines, but when placed together in different sequences, they form almost all of the letters of the lowercase alphabet. Here's a quick example. An entry stroke combined with an oval and an underturn will give you the letter A. An overturn with a compound curve will become a letter N. An entry stroke with an oval and a descending loop will turn into a G. I mean, you get the idea. By learning these basic strokes, we drastically improve the consistency and the look of our letters. It also helps us to learn where to leave the pen. Because unlike cursive writing, where we write quickly with as few pen lifts as possible, calligraphy is much slower, breaks down the letters into pieces and requires a whole lot of focus. I also have a separate in-depth guide about the basic calligraphy strokes on my website. And if you're new to calligraphy, it wouldn't be a bad idea to check out that guide as well. Before we jump into writing, here is another important note. When practicing calligraphy, we don't just write out the letters in order as they appear, A, B, C, D, E, etc. Instead, we divide the minuscule letters into groups based on their similarities. By doing this group division, we can practice the alphabet more effectively. Therefore, I have separated this alphabet into four groups. Let's begin with our easiest group of letters. These letters are based predominantly on the underturn basic calligraphy stroke. Let's take a closer look at each of the letters. The letter I begins with an entry stroke and then with an underturn. I like to make a little flick on top, but it can also make a little dot if you like. The letter U is very similar to the letter I, we just need to add a second underturn next to it. Try to maintain an equal amount of space in your counters for more consistency. The letter T starts with an entry stroke, and after that you just add an extended underturn. Although the letter T is an ascending letter, it doesn't really extend to the ascending line, but rather halfway to it. Finish it off with either a straight or a curvy crossbar. The crossbar is usually placed on the waistline or slightly above it. The letter J also starts with an entry stroke, however, instead of an underturn, it has a descending loop. Finish it off with either a flick or a dot like with the letter I. The letter Y is a combination of the letter I and J. So an entry stroke, an underturn and a descending loop. For the letter V, begin with an entry stroke and add an underturn that goes up to the waistline. Finish it off by adding a little stroke known as the comma dot. It's basically like a smaller version of an underturn which should fit inside of the letter. The letter W, it is similar to the letter U. So an entry stroke, two underturns and the comma dot at the end. A tip to make the W more balanced is to make the second underturn slightly larger than the first one. This way, when you put in the comma dot, the two underturns are optically adjusted and appear to have the same negative space. The letter R is a bit unique. Begin with an entry stroke that is not slanted as much as usual. Then for the thicker downstroke, begin slightly above the waistline. Apply pressure briefly, release it right at the waistline and add pressure again to form an underturn stroke. At first, it might be tricky to get this pressure, release and pressure combination all in one take, but believe me, it's easier than it looks like. Instead of an underturn, with the N, you will start with an overturn stroke. Then you'll finish it off with a compound curve right after that. 
The letter M, as you might guess it, is very similar to the letter N, but with two underturns at the beginning, followed by a compound curve at the end. The second group focuses on the basic calligraphy strokes known as the ascending loop. The letter L begins with a entry stroke, and then you start with a thin upstroke from the waistline that goes all the way up to the ascending line. Curve it at the ascending line and gradually apply pressure as you reach down the baseline. Right before the baseline, slowly release the pressure and come back up with a thin upstroke. The letter H begins with an entry stroke, followed by an ascending loop. Then finally add a compound curve. The letter B begins with an entry stroke, add an ascending loop, and then finish off with a reversed oval stroke. I like to do my reverse ovals with a small terminal, which is the name for this little dot at the end, but you can also do a closed oval shape if you want. The letter K, like the previous letters, begin with an entry stroke and then add an ascending loop. However, with the letter K, we have a unique shape that resembles a small size capital letter R. The letter F, again, kind of a unique letter of the alphabet, since it has both an ascending and descending loop. I usually don't extend the descending loop all the way to the descending line, because otherwise the letter becomes too big and dominant in a word or sentence. Instead, I lower it a bit more than halfway to the descending line. The thin upstroke then comes back to the middle of the X height. The third alphabet group focuses on the oval shape. The oval shape is a bit of a tricky one, but believe me, with proper practice, you'll get it in no time. Let's begin with the letter A. The letter A is pretty simple. Start with an entry stroke, add an oval, and then finish with an underturn. The letter D starts with an entry stroke, an oval, and an extended underturn. It is slightly higher than the extended underturn that we had for the letter T, if you remember. The letter G begins with an entry stroke, an oval, and a simple descending loop. The letter O is an oval shape with a comma dot on the upper right side. As with the V and the W, the comma dot should be placed inside of the letter. The letter C begins with an entry stroke. Then, place your pen on the waistline and gradually start applying pressure to form a gradual curve. Finish with a thin line that comes down from the top. You can also add a little terminal here as I like to do it. The letter E is pretty much the same as the letter C, just extend the thin upstroke to the thick downstroke to close the loop. I like to close it slightly higher than the middle. The letter Q start with a thin upstroke, add an oval, and finally a reversed descending loop. The reversed descending loop returns to the baseline and bounces off as a connecting thin upstroke for the next letter. And finally we have our last group which is made out of exception letters. Letters that don't fully share or have the basic calligraphy strokes in them. The letter P, the letter P starts with an entry stroke, followed by a long thick downstroke. I usually don't extend the downstroke all the way to the descending line, but if you want, you can do so. Finish it off with a reverse oval. As with the B, you can either add a terminal in the middle or completely close it off. The letter S, whew, the letter S is one of the most tricky letters of the alphabet. I used to struggle with this one a lot. So begin with an entry stroke, then, like with the letter R, apply pressure slightly above the waistline. Next, release it on the waistline, and in a similar motion as the reverse curve, start applying pressure to form the ball of the S. I like to end the S with a little terminal at the end, but you can leave it as a thin upstroke if you want. The letter X begins with a similar shape as the compound curve. The difference is that the swell downstroke in the middle is slightly flattened. Finish it with a thin upstroke in the middle of the downstroke. The letter Z, the Z seems like it's made of an overturn and a descending loop. However, it's slightly different. The overturn twists at the end, and you extend a descending loop that is more curved than straight. And there you have it, folks. That's the whole minuscule alphabet. 
Once you grasp the basic style of letters, you can start tweaking and changing the shapes of the basic strokes and letters. You can create a wide variety of looks with your calligraphy and even explore and develop your calligraphy style. However, having a good and strong foundation is absolutely crucial to developing something of your own. Here you can see a few alphabets in different styles I have created recently. And there you have it friends, I hope this video helped you better understand how to create a calligraphy alphabet. Now I wanna hear it from you, which alphabet letters are the ones that you struggle with the most? Let me know by dropping a comment below. Once again, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with my future and upcoming content. And until the next one, peace!